Today we have this interesting trigonometric integral. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus sine to the fourth power of x. And it's not as extravagant as the integrals we do here normally, but it's a pretty cool solution development involving complex numbers. So yeah, definitely worth a video. So we'll start off by factorizing the denominator in the complex realm. By that, I mean we need to first write it as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 minus i squared times sine to the fourth power of x. That means we can write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by, once you perform the factorization, we get 1 minus i times sine square x times 1 plus i times sine square x. Now we need a partial fraction decomposition for the integrand, which is pretty straightforward. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 1 by 1 minus i times sine square x plus 1 by 1 plus i times sine square x and a factor of 1 half to balance things out. So that means I'm interested in two integrals. I'm going to call i sub 1 the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 minus i times sine square x, and I'll call the other integral i sub 2, evaluate them, and just add up the results. For the integral i sub 1, I'd like to perform a phase shift first, going from the x realm to the pi by 2 minus x realm. That would give me i sub 1 being equal to integral 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 minus i times sine of pi by 2 minus x. Whole thing is squared. And sine of pi by 2 minus x is, of course, the cosine. So I now have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 minus i times the squared cosine of x. And now let's expand using the reciprocal of the cosine that is the secant function. So I have the squared secant of x here and here. And what that does is give me a nice structure to work with something I can use a substitution for quite easily. So I have the integral from 0 to pi by 2, secant square x dx divided by secant square x minus i. And I'm going to expand the squared secant of x as 1 plus the squared tangent. So I have secant square x dx divided by tangent square x plus 1 minus i. And now for the substitution I was talking about, we're going to let the tangent of x equal u. And this implies that we have secant square x dx equal to du. So i sub 1 is now the integral from, well, as x approaches 0, the tangent of x, that is u, approaches 0 as well. And if x approaches pi by 2, the tangent of x approaches infinity. So I now have the integral from 0 to infinity of du divided by u squared plus 1 minus i. Okay, so this is just a very simple inverse tangent structure, which gives me 1 by root 1 minus i times the inverse tangent of u divided by root 1 minus i, with the limits being 0 and infinity. And now the evaluation of these limits is pretty interesting because, well, we're dealing with the inverse tangent function from complex analysis, not the one from real analysis. Now the first thing I'd like to do is convert this root 1 minus i term into polar form. So let's call z 1 minus i. And this, of course, means that the absolute value of z is root 2, and the principal argument of z is negative pi by 4. So this implies that 1 minus i equals root 2 times e to the negative i pi by 4. And this further implies that 1 by root 1 minus i would be 1 by root root 2, times e to the now positive i pi by 8. Okay, cool. So that means our integral i sub 1 is now e to the i pi by 8 divided by root root 2 times the inverse tangent of u times e to the i pi by 8 
divided by root root 2, and we have to evaluate this inverse tangent in the limits as u tends to infinity and 0. So how exactly is the inverse tangent function defined in the complex realm? Well, we have inverse tan z equal to 1 by 2i times the principal logarithm of i minus z, terribly sorry about that, i minus z divided by i plus z. In this case, we have z equal to e to the i pi by 8 times u divided by root root 2. So first up, we're interested in the limit as u tends to infinity of the inverse tangent of u times e to the i pi by 8 divided by root root 2. However, this constant multiple doesn't matter, at least in these limits, and you'll see, and you'll see that in the algebra that follows. So we have limit as u tends to infinity of 1 by 2i times log i minus u times e to the i pi by 8 divided by i plus u times e to the i pi by 8. And to evaluate the limit as u tends to infinity, we could expand using the reciprocal of u. So we have limit as u tends to infinity, 1 by 2i times principal log i by u minus e to the i pi by 8 divided by i by u, terribly sorry again, plus e to the i pi by 8. So as u tends to infinity, these two crash out to 0, and we're left with 1 by 2i times principal log negative e to the i pi by 8 divided by e to the i pi by 8. These two cancel out quite nicely once again, and we're left with the logarithm of negative 1. And that, of course, equals i times pi. So we have this cancellation of the imaginary unit, and this implies that the upper limit, that is the limit as u tends to infinity, of the inverse tangent of u times e to the i pi by 8 divided by root root 2 equals pi by 2. And again, the constant multiple doesn't matter. We could just expand using it anyway, and we'd still get exactly the same results because of the cancellation, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so now for the zero limit, well, the zero limit is pretty straightforward. We have inverse tangent u times e to the i pi by 8 divided by root root 2. So zero times some complex number is zero, and we have inverse tangent zero, which we know to be zero. So all of this means that our integral i sub 1 conveniently sorts out to pi by 2 times e to the i pi by 8, can't forget that, almost did, pi by 2 times e to the i pi by 8 divided by root root 2, that was being multiplied by the inverse tangent term. Okay. Now for i sub 2, we have it defined as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus i times the squared sine of x. So after the phase shift and expanding by the squared secant function, I'm going to do this very quickly here. We have squared secant x dx divided by squared secant equals squared tangent plus 1. So we have 1 plus i. So it's pretty much the same structure. After the substitution, we get i sub 2 equal to now 1 by root 1 plus i times the inverse tangent of terribly sorry about that, u divided by root 1 plus i with the limits being 0 and infinity. And you can verify quite easily that this would be, again, pi by 2 times, now this thing in the polar form, is e to the now negative i pi by 8 because of reciprocation divided by root root 2. So yeah, that's pretty similar to the integral i sub 1. And now we just have to club everything together once again. Our target integral i was 1 half the sum of i sub 1 and i sub 2. So from i sub 1 and 2, we can factor out the stuff that's common. That is pi by 2 times 1 by root root 2. And I need this factor of 1 half inside because I'm left with e to the i pi by 8 minus, oh, sorry about that, plus e to the negative i pi by 8. So that means 
I have what we call the cosine of pi by 8. Well, that's how it's written in the complex realm anyway. So again, trigonometric definitions are just insanely cool when written in terms of complex analysis. So we're left with pi divided by 2 times root root 2 times the cosine of pi by 8. And I hope you enjoyed the video because we're not done yet. Cosine pi by 8 has a very nice close form because it's closely related to the cosine of pi by 4 by the double angle formulae. So recall that cosine 2x would be twice the squared cosine of x minus 1. So if we let x equal pi by 8, that means we have cosine pi by 4 equal to times the squared cosine of pi by 8 minus 1. And we have cosine pi by 4 equal to 1 by root 2. That means we have this thing here, plus 1 equal to twice the squared cosine of pi by 8 which implies that we have 1 plus root 2 divided by 2 times root 2 equal to the squared cosine of pi by 8, and we can get rid of the square by square rooting everything, meaning you have this really nice closed form for cosine pi by 8. So all of this implies that the target integral i equaled pi by 2 times root root 2 times 1 plus root 2, and this is divided by 2 times root 2. Everything's in a square root. Okay, now to make some of these square roots disappear. We have in the denominator here root 2 times root root 2. So root root 2 squared, that's a cute little 2 over there, squared equals root 2. And we already have another root 2 as well. So square that again. And we get 2, and multiply that by the 2 over here. That will give me pi by 4. So this implies that i equals pi by 4 times the square root of 1 plus root 2, which is a pretty cool closed form. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.